into the game, I'm going to take this moment to talk a little bit about um, the cinematic art that you saw just now. Um, obviously, not <laughs> we're not trying to go for photorealistic. We really are. We have one, what we consider to be one of the best uh, concept art teams in the industry, and uh, we felt that it was much. It's a great, compelling way to use some of this concept art in a way to communicate storytelling. And so, um, you know, our cinematic style is much more of a handcrafted painterly style as opposed to photorealistic, which we feel uh, photorealistic can quickly get out of date depending on what technology is, is using, uh, whereas great art is, you know, is forever. And so we want our world, uh, both re reflected through things like the cinematics as well as the engine, to feel like you are literally walking in the middle of a great piece of fantasy art. You don't want to miss a chance okay. for glory, do you? So we're going to go ahead and uh, we are outside this, the great city of Holbrook and um, we just arrived in time for the annual Great Hunt. Uh, and we're going to talk to this NPC here, Thora, to learn how we can participate in the Great Hunt. Are you part of this year's Great Hunt? I am. Tell me what I must do to prove myself. Hunt down three of the wildest animals you can find. Take trophies from each of your kills and present them to Ida. Whoever has the best trophies and whose bravery is the greatest gets to join the Great Hunt. Newt Whitebear has said this season's event will be one of the most dangerous, so be ready. I've even heard the renowned Heir Stegolkin might attend. I look forward to impressing them both after I've earned my place in the hunt. For glory! Okay, so you'll see on the upper right that uh, what appeared is the Great Hunt. Um, the Great Hunt is part of the personal story. You saw, uh, you'll see across the, the game engine, there are these NPCs or markers uh, with the, the green starburst. Uh, what we wanted to do is make sure there's very clear what parts of the game are moving your, your personal story ahead. The personal story to a lot of people is one of the most important things they have in the game. That's very different from other types of uh, content that you'll experience. <coughs> so here we've gone ahead and talked to a tracker to help us, you know, flesh out, flesh out the Minotaur. Uh, we need to collect a trophy off of them. So this would be a good time for us to talk just broadly about how the Guardian plays relative to other professions. Um, Over there. The Guardian is a heavy armor um, profession, uh, but with magical abilities. Uh, the Three thing, uh, the three uh, virtues that are represented up here in the UI are one of the things. Here, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, are three of the things that distinguish uh, the guardian as a profession. Uh, inherently, the guardian has these three virtues um, that empower them uh, to do to do mystical things like. For one, justice, the virtue of justice, allows their attacks to have a burning effect. Uh, the virtue of courage allows them to shrug off blows. And the virtue of resolve uh, enhances their self-healing abilities. Now, these are incredibly powerful abilities um, that make the Guardian a force to be reckoned with. But what makes the Guardian very distinct is that the Guardian can then choose, when they're surrounded by other players, to sacrifice a virtue in order uh, to, to benefit the greater good. So, a guardian, when surrounded by other players, is always left up with the choice like, am I better off powering myself with my virtue, or am I better off sharing it with a broader group of people and enhancing them? Uh, so the, the guardian has this ability to do, uh, have a great support role within any encounter with lots of other people. So as we go through the hunt, you'll see one of the things that uh, Sarah just did is interact with the environment to, uh, to bait the trap to summon these, summon these skelk. It was very important for us to go ahead and have elements in the environment that you can actually, you know, interact with, do things with, and again, be more immersed. Let's see. So we've gone ahead, she's been very efficient, she's gone ahead and um, collected all of the, all of the trophies needed. So now we're going to present these to Ido the Tanner and hopefully get qualified for the Great Hunt. As we run through this area, uh, if you've seen the human area that we showed uh, last year, you'll notice that the field, the appearance, uh, the, all the ambient weather effects are, are great at kind of setting the mood for the Norn environment, which is this misty morning uh, Nordic.